So um, yeah, basically CCAN is a framework uh, and it's open source for building data management platforms. Uh, it is written in Python. Um, it is the most popular framework for doing data portals, not just open, but also internal data portals. And uh, it's used by many governments around the world, as well as uh, private organizations, nonprofits, uh, and uh, companies from big to small. Um, yeah, the, the, there are lots of features within CCAN, um, but the, the main kind of uh, functionality of it, which is cataloging data, uh, data management, um, um, you know, metadata management as well, and uh, um, having data APIs um, in place. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, as I said, CCAN is used by a lot of parties, uh, mainly by governments and the enterprise. Um, yeah, and it's it's used around the world from EU to the Americas, uh, Asia, and so on. Um, and also there are a number of companies like national companies, as well as uh, commercial companies that are uh, using it for their own purposes. Uh, and uh, uh, as I mentioned, it can be easily extended and customized for your needs. Um, today, the CCAN is powering uh, data, open data portals uh, of, of the countries like Australia, Canada, USA, uh, UK, um, and so on. Um, and uh, one of the examples that I have, that we, uh, we'll be uh, looking through several examples. The so first one is the data.gov one, which is the United States uh, Federal Open Data Catalog. Uh, so this one is one of the first data portals that was built uh, using CCAN. Um, and it is, uh, it's quite popular today, a lot of uh, data sets are being published. So the way it works is it basically harvests the data sets from uh, government parties in the USA uh, and basically gets, reads all the metadata from different sources and then aggregates it on their own uh, website, which is built on CCAN. And it, you know, it is cataloged there so that users can find the data sets in the single place for, you know, for the, uh, for, for, for data sets within the government in the US. Um, and I can quickly show you the site itself. So yeah, this is how it looks like. Um, this is the search page. And here you can see that they have around more than 300,000 data sets from different government organizations in the US. Um, and the, this, this is quite customized CCAN uh, UI. So you can, uh, you can see the colors from, from the data.gov as well as number of extensions, the way they list the data sets here. Um, you can also understand that each data set has several resources in different formats. So for example, this very first one has CSV, RDF, JSON, and XML files. Uh, and so on. This one, for example, has just an HTML. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see various facets. You can filter by location. If you are interested in a specific region, you can filter by topics, uh, topic categories, the type of the data sets, the tags, um, the formats of the files, um, Organization types like, you know, uh, in US they have federal, federal government, state government, city government, university, and so on. And the uh, uh, organizations um, and also the publishers and so on. The, these are the codes of the bureaus. Um, all right, so moving forward. The next one uh, in my list of examples are uh, Energinet, which is the uh, an energy provider in the Denmark. And this one is kind of unique. Um, I'll show the, the live website to you. So this uh, energy data service, the DK is used by Energinet to publish raw data sets or normalized data 
uh, and it's done automatically by the ETL scripts. So uh, data sets are pushed like uh, by the programmatically to the data store uh, every, you know, on, on some schedule, like every 10 minutes or an hour and so on. Um, and, the, um, and on this website, they have all these data sets um, together, but it's raw data, meaning that uh, you need to, you need to understand, like you, you need to have some context, you need to be from the industry on something so that you can read the data, you can understand what it is and so on. Uh, and if I look into it, this is the data set page they uh, the Energinet have. And here you can you can see the, the data table itself. We can do various filters. Uh, it provides the great UI for doing SQL like filters. But the 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 difference of the of the of this project is that um, at some point it was decided to build a standalone front end for this uh, secant data so that uh, it can be user-friendly, it can be easy to read and understand. So this is the site that uses the same data from the secant um, and uh, it has, you know, the UI has been quite different. So it's not, or second like front end, but it's it's mostly uh, for the user interface. So you can see nice charts and graphs here. It's, it's almost a dashboard. And uh, instead of seeing, for example, historical data for L spot prices, uh, you can see the current price, which are the most relevant for users uh, at the given time. And also you can see the the electricity prices uh, for the next eight hours. So it's it's like a forecast. You can also understand what are the top five data sets uh, by you know by popularity. Um, you can also see the CO2 emission from the electricity production in the next eight hours, uh, the share of solar and wind power in electricity production, and also the share of biogas in the gas system. So uh, the idea behind it is that uh, instead of having raw data, uh, here you can see more uh, you know, user-friendly charts and figures so that you can easily get some insights. Okay. So going back to my presentation. So next example is uh, the open data portal in the Denmark. Um, which is, um, it's not really similar to data.gov, but basically it provides you uh, with, again, with government data in Denmark. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, and this is used by many municipalities in the Denmark. Um, the data sets are published using the admin UI. So admin UI is different. This one is a public UI. So you can see it's, uh, it is more user friendly. It is uh, it has great UI, while the admin side is uh, is something that C can provides out of the box. Um, and I will be showing you admin UI in a bit while when I will be doing the demo. But this is this is the this is how the data portal in Denmark looks like. Going back to my presentation again, um, and another example. Uh, using, you know, building the data portal using CCAN is the uh, national grid electricity system operator in the United Kingdom. Um, let me just open it up. And the, that one is very unique. Why? Because again, there is a, CCAN is used as a metadata hub. It's something like some central hub for, the, for managing metadata. And then, uh, and it's used just for, by data publishers, it's not by uh, general uh, public. And then there is a uh, the the website which is focused on the user friendliness and the user interface, uh, and consumes the data from the second uh, metadata and the data APIs, and presents the uh, you know the, uh, the this kind of look and feel for the for the users. Um, it has. 
number of features integrated. So first of all, uh, there is a data subscriptions feature, uh, which means you can subscribe to data sets and get the updates. If metadata changes or data itself changes, you get a notification to your email uh, and you can be always up to date. 